Hi, I'm Chris with Afflicted Broadheads, and today we're going to talk about early season identification of oaks. It's going to be a simple way for you to identify reds versus white by looking at the leaves. Stay tuned. So as we get into early season and trying to pattern white tails and get a good idea of their travel routes, it's a good idea to know your oaks, especially just the simple difference between red oaks and white oaks. And if you ask why that's important, it's because deer do actually have a preference. They prefer white oaks over red oaks because there is more tannins in the red oaks and they're a little bit, bit more bitter. Uh, matter of fact, they're a lot more bitter than the white oaks. And also, white oak species will typically bear nuts every single year. Now, there are some variances of that based on uh, location, type of year, uh, if there was too much wind, that type of thing. But white oaks typically will bear every year, and red oaks will typically be every other year. So you're going to get more of a mass production out of your white oaks as well. But they're really easy to identify, and so we're just going to look at a few leaf types here. Um, if you want to go back and look at some other early season brows, we did a video last week uh, just talking specifically about some of the other plants that the deer will focus on pre-season coming into the first few weeks of deer season. And in a few weeks, when the acorns start to, drop, start to drop, we're going to do a very detailed video on oaks, identification by bark, nuts, region. We're really going to break it down. So make sure you're, you're subscribed to be able to see that video as well. But today, let's just talk about leaves alone. The simplest way for you to identify oaks in general between white and red is by the leaves. White oaks will always have round lobes with no bristles, and red oaks will always have bristles. Now there's some red oaks, like shingle oaks and some of the other reds, that will maybe only have a few bristles on some of the leaves in the trees, but typically red oaks of all species have some type of bristle. So when we look at this and we look at, say, the pin oak, you can see the various structures here. Every terminal end of the point has a very small bristle. When you look at a red oak leaf, it also terminates into a very small bristle at each end. And then as soon as you start getting into your white oaks, like this swamp white oak, you can see you have these rounded lobes with no bristles. And the regular white oak, you have these nice deep fissures, again, with round lobes. So without having to identify a tree by its bark or its nut, and it's early season and there's no nuts on the ground yet, and you're going through the woods and you're trying to identify the best places to hunt and you want white oaks, look up and look at those for those round lobed leaves. Now this time of year, it's, you know, it's not, we haven't had any major storms, so there isn't a lot of green leaves on the trees and we're in a very mature forest, so it's hard for us to reach a lot of stuff. So some of these like this white oak here, you know, it's a past fallen leaf, it is brown, but you can see these nice deep fissures and the round lobes for easy identification. So when I look down this row here, this is an old fence line and it is full of oaks. Now, as we go through here, one thing that you'll notice is most of these oaks in here are red oaks, but there are some white oaks mixed in. So I'm getting the best of both worlds when I set up on this tree line. This is a big travel corridor. There's a house over here and, and open land. And over on this side, we have a major road. So it really works good that they're following this fence line, but they are definitely coming in for those acorns. This is a primary food crop for deer. And in some areas, the acorns are going to be preferred even over corn. And the white oak is the first choice. So let's take a little bit of a walk here and look at some trees and some good areas to set up. As we come down this tree line, I like this spot for a number of reasons. If you watched our other early season browse video, you'll see that in this area, we got a lot of multiflora rose growing all over the place and also lots of jewelweed. And it has already all been mowed over. So the next source of food that's going to be in this area is, of course, our oaks. Now, right here, you look at these two massive trees. This one on the left is a northern red oak. And this one on the right is a swamp oak. And so I get the best of both worlds in this area along this tree line. Line, but the swamp oak is a faithful producer every year and generally it drops earlier. Now what's interesting as you look around the forest floor here all these seedlings that are coming up are the northern red oak. There are hardly any seedlings at all 
for the white and that's because this area gets torn up. Those acorns will get obliterated and the red oaks seem to fall through the cracks later on in the season so they're a lot more prolific so in a lot of older forests you'll see a lot more of these big red oaks in areas where there's a mixture of whites and reds. Now one of the key identifying features as we talked about before on these red oaks you'll have a couple different leaf patterns. This is some younger leaves. These are the off the seedlings on the floor but you'll notice every one of these has a bristle. Now when you look at the swamp white oak you'll see that it has these lobes here but no bristles and they're nice and round and often on the immature plants the only way to determine when they're really small is by those bristles so the bristles are the determining point between the red oak and the white oak especially when you're looking at a northern red and a swamp white oak this is one of my favorite oak trees on our farm here and this happens to be a swamp white oak and it's in a perfect location i know it's a swamp white oak uh, just by quickly looking at the bark, this nice gray bark with these long rectangular uh, type pieces coming down. But we want to talk about the leaf again, right? Because this is the easiest and fastest way to disseminate between your reds and your whites. So this is this swamp white oak leaf. You can see how it's got a big top flare here, narrows down. It doesn't have any deep fissures, but it has these nice rounded lobes with no bristles. Now, I love this tree because of where it sits. So it's on a really good travel corridor right here. I have thick woods and a creek over here. And on this side, as you can hear, we have a highway. So the highway noise is a pain in the neck to, to hunt around. However, it just creates a real natural funnel of the deer moving back and forth through here. And in the fall, the second these hit the ground, the deer will be in here to clean them up along with the remnant clovers and other things that are growing in this area. So this is a huge stopping point and a great setup and ambush point for me for early season to get my whitetail eating on some white oaks.